the 2001 Seattle Mariners beat Cleveland 3-2 in the ALDS, but then fell 4-1 to the Yankees in the ALCS. After a 116-win season, losing 4-1 in the ALCS is definitely a disappointing end of the season, and the Mariners, with Ichiro Suzuki winning MVP and Rookie of the Year, would be looking to return to that form in 2002. Unfortunately for the M's, that would be the beginning of their postseason drought. Winning 93 games in both 2002 and 2003, they missed out on the playoffs, and since that 2003 season, have only broke the 90 win mark one year, and it was last year, 2021, where they hit exactly 90, but still couldn't manage to make the postseason. Since that fateful loss on October 22nd of 2001, it has been over 7,450 days since the Mariners played in the playoffs, but it has certainly felt like they've been on the rise. The Mariners don't have the best roster and fall in just below the league average in MLB The Show 22 as the 17th best team in the league. They only crack the top 10 in their power, and their pitching is the only other spot above the league average. But beyond that, it's not looking too good, with defense and speed almost at the bottom. Their minor league affiliates are the Tacoma Rainiers in AAA and the Arkansas Travelers in AA. And they have a few decent prospects to work with, as well as a $137 million budget, which compared to some teams in Major League Baseball is a ton of money. Picking up free agent Robbie Ray in the offseason immediately grants the Mariners a boost to their pitching staff. At 87 overall, the 30-year-old is going to be a pretty big deal and hopefully will lead this team to some wins, but he certainly could use some help in the bullpen. Some big trades also were made to pick up left fielder Jesse Winkler, second baseman Adam Frazier, and the third baseman Eugenio Suarez. Speaking of Suarez, anybody who has watched me play MLB on Twitch knows that I'm going to get a lot of pronunciations of names wrong, so bear with me on that and maybe correct me in the comments. Outside of those off-season pickups, the team has some pieces, just needs a few more to be put into place. Mitch Haniger, the right fielder, has great power and has been a solid staple of this team for years. Although he's 30 years old, Tom Murphy is a very serviceable catcher. First baseman Ty France is an okay bat. Good 76 contact against righties and 74 against lefties. Shortstop J.P. Crawford does have the best bat, but is pretty good defensively. Another outfielder, Kyle Lewis, hits home runs all over the place and was the Rookie of the Year in 2020. The 22-year-old prospect, Jared Kelnick, shows a ton of potential and should be huge for years to come for the M's. And he's not alone as far as up-and-coming prospects are concerned. Noel V. Marte, at the age of 20, is already 72 overall. Emerson Hancock has shown signs of becoming a great starting pitcher. Julio Rodriguez, although he's just 21 and 67 overall, has been called up to the show and will hope to see big improvement very quickly from the center fielder. And another center fielder is the big hitting Taylor Trammell, who we're going to hold on to just in the hopes he becomes something special. Taking a look at our depth chart, you can see how dire it really is. At the left field spot, we've got Jesse Winkler, Jared Kelnick, and Dylan Moore, which puts that position 10th in the league, which is the only good spot realistically. Our right field isn't too bad either, but Mitch Hanniger and Billy Hamilton are both on expiring contracts. Uh, relievers aren't too bad. Decent looking bullpen, but it's not quite as deep as I would hope. So we're definitely going to have to be looking to pick up some pieces there. As far as every other position is concerned, unless there's a prospect at that spot, they are definitely on the chopping block. Again, taking a look at the rotation, Robbie Ray, obviously the best pitcher on this team, uh, and it's a pretty steep drop-off afterwards down to Logan Gilbert, Marco Gonzalez, Chris Flexen, and Nick Margavichich is at the bottom of the list. And over in the bullpen, again, it's not great, but it's also not terrible. Justice Sheffield... Um, 67 overall, Darren McCon over there. I don't think that's how you say that last name, but it's going to be a struggle because, again, I'm just terrible with last names in general. Uh, in terms of relievers, again, not too great. Probably Drew Steckenrider is our best at a 78 overall, but the setups and closers, again, we kind of start to creep back up, and it's the reason that the bullpen is probably considered 11th in the league. Uh, Diego Castillo, 81 overall, the right-hander. 
pretty solid break throws a pretty quick fastball but has a slider as his main pitch and then our closer paul seawald sits at an 80 overall uh again not too fast off of those uh two fastballs but the slider off speed with a lot of break could do some work at the moment budget wise we look okay robbie ray eugenio suarez and Mitch Haniger take up the most amount of money on contracts for us. And a lot of these guys are coming up on free agency or arbitration soon. Uh, hopefully we can sign some guys for cheap, but nobody is safe right now, especially if you're worth a decent amount. I would love to make it to the postseason this year or next, but I'm definitely thinking long term as the manager for this team. Almost 50 million in available budget, enough maybe to go out and sign some big free agents, or maybe just enough to absorb big contracts if we can make some big trades. Now, as a manager coming in right now, I don't care about previous year's stats. We're going to look at this year mostly for the guys on our team. Uh, just to see if they're going to stay. So we'll wait for contract extensions and the like for now. We'll definitely be looking for good prospects and good trades. And I'm going to try to do my best to limit any sort of trades that we make uh, from being too cheesy. Because unfortunately, as is the case in games like this, sometimes the trade logic can get a little bit too wild. Now you guys see it in Madden all the time. It can kind of happen and MLB The Show as well. They've said they've fixed it, but I have seen way too many crazy trades that just don't make a whole lot of sense. So anything that seems a little bit too absurd, I just won't accept. But at the end of the day, for me, age is probably my biggest factor in creating our lineup. I don't mind bringing in a veteran player to help us with a playoff push, but in my eyes, once you're over the age of 30, I kind of be hesitant to re-sign you i'm looking for young stars anybody who is cheap but looks like they could develop into something big is definitely what we're going for so maybe a little bit money ball-esque there and that also will maybe hopefully allow us to sign some really big stars out of free agency by saving a bunch of money and just spending it on a couple of guys so welcome to the Mariners and welcome to MLB The Show 22. I'm very excited to have a new series underway and we have over 7,000 days of postseason drought to try to overcome as we will look to make the Mariners into a truly contending team. With all that being said, let's get into this a little bit. We are here at spring training and I think first thing that we're going to do is go and, and edit some training uh, skip through the tutorials, even though I've seen them. The game doesn't seem to like me. And we'll keep a lot of these on auto, but for some guys, we're definitely going to change them how we want. As a player, I'm not great at batting. I wouldn't say I'm terrible either. So I would like to see more contact on a lot of players, especially if they already have good power like Mitch Haniger does. Uh, I don't see the point in using base running drills. I don't think his base running aggression matters. So we will immediately send him to the batting cages and work on getting his contact up. And that will probably hold true with uh, almost anybody. As long as they're above like 60 power, we want their contact to be better because getting on base with base hits is big. But then you look at a guy like Adam Frazier, whose power is super low. So I'm absolutely fine with his power being there. But we're going to go through and change uh, a few of these uh, trainings around and try to get ourselves set up, try to get our uh, young guys into a spot where they can spend a lot of time, you know, in the weight room or doing batting practice so that in a couple of years time, they are really, really good at a specific thing. Guy like Jared Kelnick, definitely we want on the batting cages. He's got good power against righties, sure his power against lefties is bad, but uh, with that low contact... If I can't make contact with a pitch, then who cares how much power you have? You're just going to get out anyways. With our training done, we can take a look at some free agents. I don't think there's anybody really that we're looking to pick up. Uh, you know, at this point in the season, there's not a lot available to us. We could maybe look at picking up Jose De Jesus, the closing pitcher. He's young and he's pretty solid. Just to see potential, but 21 years old. You know, you feel like he could go up, but it's that C potential is really pulling me away. I'm looking for high potential guys that are young. Uh, might seem a little bit obvious, but our bullpen is already pretty solid. So it, maybe if he was a starting pitcher, we would go for it, but not as a closer. And I actually don't see anybody as a free agent that I like. So we're not going to make any trades today. Um, 
all of these, we're going to keep on manual for now, but I might allow the CPU to do a few things for us to make things easy. But contract extension wise, is there anybody that we obviously want to resign? Probably want to keep Jesse Winkler if we just picked him up. Adam Frazier in a similar spot. Dylan Moore in a similar spot. All of these guys are right in that area where, uh, you know, resigning them will be easier than getting a replacement otherwise. Um, and none of them are too old yet. Uh, a couple of 31 year olds, but I think that that's not the end of the world. So for sure, we're re-signing Jared Kelnick. Um, so we'll go ahead and make him an offer. Anything that he likes is going to be fine. We want to get him for a long time, but we would have to offer him a lot of money for anything more than a two year deal, which is kind of a shame, but that's what happens when you're a young player. Um, we don't want to low ball him. We don't want to give him too much. Let's offer him 1.2 million uh, over two years. And it's too low. How about 1.3? He still doesn't like that. All right. I can go up to 1.4 for a guy like that. No problem. And just like that. Well, we've got our first uh, contract extension, but we'll probably do a little bit of this after we've seen some gameplay uh, early this season. Again, with the trade talks, we will wait until we can see how a few players are playing and probably try to get rid of uh, low potential prospects and some older players to try and bring in some new faces, some young talent. Uh, but we are at the start of spring training. Let's see what this team has. Now, the way that I think that we're going to do a lot of these gameplays is to go into critical moments. So we'll sim through games throughout most of the season but if it feels like a big matchup we will jump in and play the whole thing on a player lock uh until we make the postseason if we make the postseason we might end up playing full games but baseball can just be so long sometimes that uh it just makes sense to you know not spend you know 45 minutes on one game when we're playing you know the hundreds what is it 162 for the season plus sp spring training and hopefully the postseason i don't know if we would ever get through a full season so uh, i think it will be a lot of critical situations and for this first game we're gonna go with the designated hitter and see what one of our youngest prospects and brightest prospects can do so here it is our first spring training game Oh, man, I'm excited to play some baseball. A much different uh, change of pace than what I'm used to with NCAA 14. We'll see what Kelnick can do as we will just go ahead and skip to his first at bat as the DH. Top of the third, batting eighth against Mike Clevenger. And we're just going to try to be patient. You guys will see I am not great at batting. We are, by the way, on uh, all-star difficulty. It's above veteran. Let me take a look. Yeah, all-star batting, all-star pitching. We'll be doing pinpoint pitching as well. So not the easiest. Definitely going to be some struggles, but we'll see what we can do. One and one is the count. It's a decent pitch to swing on, but I missed it by a mile. Only 54 contact against righties for Jared. Is They're going to deal another ball. 12-6 curve outside for a ball. It's two and two. Expecting a strike. And no, he throws it in, loads the count. Maybe a chance to get on base. I would definitely would not mind taking a walk. Got to be looking to swing, though. And we just cracked it. Oh, the second swing of the bat. It's perfect, perfect. Yoinked out of the stadium. Jared Kelnick gives us a 2-0 home run. 4-21. A beautiful start to the game. And oh, if that's the season he's going to have, if we're going to bat that well, this is going to be a lot of fun. We were sitting on that inside fastball that came to us. One for one, and now we're up three at nothing. You Darvish into pitch. Top of the fourth, two outs, runner on first. Going to try to have that same patience as the slider misses low. Lovely start. Can we keep it going? Second pitch coming. Got to swing at that, but we ground it. And it's an out. Oh, man, we almost got it through there. But good play from whoever's playing second base for San Diego today. Still looking pretty solid. You know, the nice thing about being the DH is I don't have to deal with any uh, defense. I'm not sure if we'll watch a lot of defensive stuff unless it's in a big spot. Uh, in games where we play lock, decent looking throw there from Craig Stammen, but... We try not to swing on the first pitch most of the time unless it's too juicy to pass up. Knuckle curve for a strike. It's 0-1. 
Second pitch coming. Got a swing on that one, but we just got under it a little bit. Popped up. And he's running to the wall on the warning track, but that is going to be caught for an out. Second out of the inning. Man, just a little bit higher with the PCI placement, and that's another home run. That was top of the seventh. Will we get another look is the real question. So we've come in here. Top of the tenth. Last one was top of the seventh with two outs. Now it's top of the tenth. Runner on base. We're the first up in this inning. 4-4. What can we do to try to make a difference? We had a good lead, but guess the bullpen gave it up there kind of a shame first pitch a fastball strike from Reese Nair bad swing but it's a grounder for a base hit and they're not going to wind them home so we've got runners on the corners with no outs Louis Torrens maybe Louis Torrens I don't know how to say his name but he's up to bat 3-0 they're going to walk the base is loaded with no outs this is a great chance for us to maybe take the lead so we would love to get a win. I know it's spring training, but just start off the season right. First baseman, Abraham Toro up to bat. 1-1 one, one is the count, the pitch coming. And that one is put deep into the uh, left field. Bounces, gets down. It's going to be two RBIs. And he gets the double out of it. 6-4. That's got to be enough. And simming through, yeah. We get the win. First game of spring training good to see man jared just that home run i don't know if i could have planned a better way to start our batting after saying i was gonna struggle with a 54 contact guy jared kelnick impressing in his first appearance of the season he gets player of the game two for four with a home run uh, an rbi and a single george kirby gets the win and we must have scored another one seven four on nine hits very efficient one error and we're able to take down San Diego in the first game of spring training. So that's one down with like 200 to go as we have started this season. I'm very excited to see how this season gets on. And I'm very excited to see if you guys enjoy this series. If you're excited about baseball, if you like MLB The Show, please like the video. Let me know in the comments what you think we should do. Are there any prospects that we should try to pick up? Are there any big trades we should try to do? And I want your predictions. Where do you think we make it? Do we break 500 this season? There, I don't think that we make the playoffs, but maybe do we sneak into the wild card? Or do we have like just an insane season and find our way fighting for the division? I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts. Let me know in the comments. Uh, like the video again if you haven't already. And then please subscribe because unfortunately that is going to have to be the end of this one. We'll definitely have more actual baseball in the next episode, but it's a great way to start the season. And I think the end goal for us is to eventually reach 116 wins again, but maybe take it all the way to the World Series this time. Again, though, if you haven't already liked, subscribed, commented, whatever, do all that and then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and, well, I would say in the College Football Revamped mod, but I guess that's not where we're playing, but there will still be a link to it down in the description below. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. We did a new nickname for you guys for this series, but wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios! Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.